You've seen some interesting gymnastics with Requel so far, but you're about to see more, and it very well could confuse you if you're not used to MapReduce and how it works. Even if you're a MapReduce expert, it might be worth watching this clip if only to see how it's implemented with RethinkDB. Straight off, MapReduce is all about taking advantage of horizontal scaling and multiple core processors. All MapReduce queries in RethinkDB are executed in parallel, across shards, using multiple CPU cores. This makes MapReduce tremendously powerful for analyzing massive bits of data. But what is MapReduce? If you, like me, are a little bit hazy on MapReduce and how it works, I'll hang out for just a bit and we'll talk about it. Jumping over to Wikipedia, you can read up on it, but the basic gist is this. MapReduce was developed by Google as a way to sift over data distributed over many, many systems. The idea is that you define the data that you want and then, in a second step, reduce it, bringing it all back together. Let's take a look at an example. Here, I just want to find the number of albums that we have in our catalog. You've already seen me use the map function, so that should look familiar. Here I'm doing something that might look a bit strange. I'm just returning a one for each album in our catalog. If I ran this, you could imagine the output. A bunch of ones, 347 to be exact, is I already know the number of albums in our database. These are basically useless to me, unless I decided to count each one of them on screen, which would be ridiculous. If I tack on a reduce function, however, things get easier for me. Reduce takes a callback, which expects a left and a right argument. More on that in just a second. I can now work on those 347 records, all of them ones, by adding them together. I do that by adding the left to the right using the add function you see here. But what's left and right? When the reduction starts, the left value is the very first one, and the right is the next one in the sequence. The reduction is working on top of a sequence in a recursive fashion applying the addition calculation as I specified. Once that sequence is completed, the left becomes a 2, and we move on from there. Or, maybe the right is a 2, and the left is a 1. This is an important thing to understand. The calculation is not linear from left to right. It happens in a distributed way. As mentioned, it can operate across your cluster in parallel. We're just working on the left side and the right side of a sequence. This is the definition from the RethinkDB documentation. The goal of a reduction is to squeeze a single value down from a map function based on the operation you define in the reduce function. It's not just left to right. It happens on all sides at once in many directions. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the role of group. In other systems, Mongo, Hadoop, etc., you group your values together in the map step. RethinkDB has an explicit group function which does this for you, and you've seen me use this already. A quick side note, one thing I love when reading through the RethinkDB documentation are the illustrations from Annie Wright, the team's designer. It adds a nice personal touch, and I find that refreshing. Here's MongoDB's implementation of MapReduce, which is a bit different from RethinkDB. The map function shapes the data by providing a key and a value, which you output using emit. MapReduce with MongoDB used to be single-threaded only, but in recent versions of Mongo, you can now use multiple threads to execute a MapReduce function. The reason I mention this is that execution in parallel is not evident with the API that Mongo gives you. RethinkDB embraces this concept by using left-right sequencing, and it's right in the MapReduce call.